Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. And remember that UK Health Radio is your global feel-good radio. Now, you can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is a very special person, Darren McBratney. Darren McBratney is an aboga facilitator, healer, the founder of the Global Nurture Project and owner of the Costa Rica Yoga Spa. You can find out more about Darren McBratney and his very profound work at Costa Rica Yoga Spa and also globalnurtureproject.com. Welcome, Darren McBratney. Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? I'm great. Now, you know, we're talking about a really serious subject today, which is about using natural healing to help to empower people to get off of very serious drugs. And we're talking about heroin, cocaine, alcohol, antidepressants, opioids, and the leading cause of death in the United States for people under 50 is now drug overdose. So this is a very serious topic. And I wanted to start by saying that we have tremendous respect for AA and for, um, all the nonprofit organizations that are also working very hard to save people's lives. But let's talk about natural healing and plant medicine. First of all, can you explain for our audience what is iboga? Where does it come from and how do you use it? We, we need to start by explaining what iboga is. Uh, sure, and, and some people might have heard the term ibogaine uh, as well, um, and that's uh, that's uh, used in some clinic clinical settings as as well. Uh, iboga uh, is a plant that's been around for millennia, and uh, it's it, uh, mostly it's more abundant in in, in, the, in Gabon. Uh, it's also found in Cameroon and the Congo. Um, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years, firstly by the pygmies, and then uh, a thousand years ago, more by the Bitwi, which is a spiritual practice. Uh, also labeled as a religion. Um, iboga is, uh, comes from a, a, a small shrub in the dog bane family. I have some behind me uh, in, in the office here. Uh, I, I grow it. I'm the only one legally uh, registered with the Ministry of Agriculture in Costa Rica to grow this plant. And I'm growing it under the pretense of saving it from ex extinction. So there's seven main varieties of iboga. And if you go to a Bitwi practitioner, they're gonna tell you about the mountain iboga, the river iboga, the coastal iboga, uh, uh, the valley iboga, uh, these type of things. Uh, in, in fact, those studies show that there's, it can be up to over 600 varieties of this plant. Um, uh, so yeah, seven main ones. Uh, in Gabon, um, they were having a problem with it becoming extinct, uh, so they have closed the borders to exporting it. I'm a big, uh, I'm, I'm totally into this. I think it's a great thing. That was uh, led by, by this guy, Jan, this guy from France who's been living in Gabon for a long time that I know personally, and I have nothing but praises for, for the closing down of shipping out Iboga to, to help that country re rejuvenate its sources. Um, elephants love it, gorillas love it, uh, porcupines is kind of the porcupine is a spiritual animal of iboga. Uh, there's all kinds of legends on how it was found. Uh, a, a bitui, or no, excuse me, a, a, a pygmy uh, shaman went out and, and shot a, a porcupine and took it home and felt the healing of effects with his wife, and, and they knew it was eating this plant root bark. There's uh, there, the, the legend of it being the uh, the plant of knowledge that you find in the Bible. Uh, most likely what happened was humans had a observation of animals eating this plant way back in the day and they kind of took it on and, and it uh, became uh, known for uh, fertility, for rites of passage and, and for different healings, uh, of course. Uh, there hasn't been a problem with addiction uh, in, in that part of the world. So that's only in a, uh, a Western thing, uh, a thought, but it, it works amazingly so, and we'll get into talking about that. But 
This is just a very common plant in that part of the world. Uh, it's also kind of related to the coffee plant. So it'll grow as it's also in the dog dang family. But uh, anyways, uh, that's what Iboga is. And we're, 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 what we use is uh, the alkaloids that are, that are scraped off of the root. Uh, so we're using the outside of the root, so the root bark. And this plant is also known as um, wood or root bark, um, ibogaine. Uh, I'll get into more of that as the conversation goes on. But uh, the plant should be about five to seven years old to be psychoactive. And the psychoactive ingredient in this plant is the alkaloid ibogaine. Okay, but it also has numerous other alkaloids uh, that I feel should be used in ceremony now in some of these science doesn't science will never fully understand this plant okay um i've talked to neuroscientists at different iboga uh, conferences and stuff and it will never be fully understood but they do know that some of those alkaloids are good for pain treatment and other things so i as a practitioner only use root bark um, I, I have worked with ta before which is the total alkaloid extraction of this plant but I prefer just to work with the root bark because uh, I'm a rooty kind of guy. But uh, anyways, I hope that answers your question. Okay, now I know Darren extremely well because for about the past two years, I've done medical intuitive readings for Darren McBratney and his clients. And before anyone goes to the Costa Rica yoga spa for a healing retreat, then Darren sends me a little report with some information. And from there, I spend about an hour and a half doing a medical intuitive reading. And it's always very humbling to me to do the medical intuitive readings for people who are coming to work with Darren Rick Bratney. These people are very serious. They're coming from all over the world. They're coming to you know, make profound shifts in their health and also for spiritual growth. So it's a great honor for me to work with Darren. Now, Darren McBratney, why do you think Iboga is so helpful for empowering people to get off of these dangerous drugs? Uh, I'll go into that in a second, but I want to touch base with you on your medical intuitive readings that, that I get with, with, the, with the clients I have. I call them guests. Um, uh, some facilities use uh, medical tests, such as a liver enzyme test and a, and a stress test, EKG. Uh, what we're interested in uh, as a facilitator working with this plant, uh, because it's the most powerful plant uh, medicine on the planet, is we want to make sure your heart is in good condition and your liver is in con get good condition. Um, if you have any recent head injuries, this can be a flag. And of course, we're looking at uh, what kind of uh, medications you're on. And that's the most important thing uh, that we're looking at with, with drug addiction. But I, I, I work with you uh, because I get more insights uh, from, from a medical intuitive reading than I do from a medical report. In fact, I get things that the medical reports don't pick up on, such as mutated genes or a mutated uh, disease, um, which has happened before. And um, I come from a background where Western medicine failed me horrifically. I had ciguatera red tide toxins uh, for two years, and I spent a mountain of money I went to the best facility, facilities in the world for testing, and I got uh, every, every type of MRI and spinal tap. They could not diagnose me um, until a medical intuitive came along and, and correctly diagnosed me in five minutes. So I've been, uh, I developed the Global Nurture Project out of that experience. Um, I look at uh, the holistic approach, which is uh, from Edgar Casey, who was a medical intuitive. So we look at your spiritual, emotional, physical, and I get so much more insight from a medical intuitive reading than I do from a, a medical uh, reading, so to speak. And uh, this is a great advantage for me. It's a great advantage for my guests that are coming. Um, we see the whole person as, as a whole and not just uh, focused on these things as your liver and heart because anyways. Um, so and your other question again was why is Iboga good for addiction? Is that a question? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, it, it's the reason why it's so amazingly wonderful for addiction uh, is because what Iboga is actually doing after working with it for 10 years now and hundreds of people, uh, um, what it does is we were all born perfectly organic and aligned with the universe when we were born. And it was the most precious moments of our life. Only we don't remember this. 
what Iboga does is it gets us right back to that state and it erases kind of all the trauma in your past, whatever. And so it gives you this rebirth that that saying today is the first day of the rest of your life. Well, that's how you, that's how it is after an Iboga ceremony. It's the first day of the rest of your life. So it's the stepping stone. It provides this stepping stone. And I'm always a big uh, person that says that, you know, this is 70% uh, plant medicine, 30% the person. So it's about uh, coaching this person. It's about helping them through this, through this uh, rebirth, uh, so to speak. But that's what Iboga is doing. It's resetting your neurotransmitters to the day you were born. And um, so it gives you this new start. What you do with that is up to you. But that's why we have extra support here, like life coaches, uh, intentional coaches, acupuncture, and all this other stuff that we add. And I work with other plant medicines, too, if it's necessary for the person to have uh, now we're talking about animal medicine, about uh, Bufo alvarius, uh, which is amazing, and that's the cherry on top. Now, this isn't for everybody, but in some cases, these are, these are great. And I, I use kinesiology to uh, compare it to, to pair up the person with, with the medicines if it's necessary. So I also work with Combo, which is a great lymphatic cleanser, and, and uh, it's like a mini boga session, if you will. Uh, I work with Sananga, which are these eye drops that uh, spiritually cleanse you, uh, they also, interestingly enough, they're from the Amazon and they have um, Iboga alkaloids in them, which is quite interesting. Uh, so, you know, I work with sage. I, I, I uh, work with uh, organic foods. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, that's why it's good for addiction. It, it completely resets you and gives you a new life. But that's, that's just part of what we do here at the Global Nurture Project. And a lot of facilities uh, will take an addict uh, that's been an addict for a long time and they'll, you know, give them a heavy, uh, heavy dosage and that person may be free of that addiction. But it's also, I think it's very unsafe to go in right into a ceremonial mode, especially with someone who's been addicted, say, for over 10 years or whatever. I do a very gradual thing, and I'm working with addicts for maybe three weeks, maybe even, uh, well, two weeks at least before I even do a, a ceremony. Uh, there's a thing called microdosing, and I, I'm a big promoter of microdosing. It's, it's very safe, and it's a very good, effective way to wean people off their, off their addiction. Uh, a lot of facilities will say, yeah, uh, you know, you gotta be clean for two weeks, whatever. You can come to me, uh, tapered down hopefully but you can come to me with your full-blown addiction and i'll take you down over a couple weeks and then we'll talk about a ceremony and, and talk about a clinical dose which is 14 grams of root bark or more uh but i'm i'm very safe and cautious when it comes to this especially when it comes to like ssris like effervex or zoloft uh, those are probably the hardest drugs for someone to get off of psychologically for sure um heroin uh is probably the easiest um, as long as it's pure hair and form. Uh, one of the very uh, 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 dangerous drugs out there, and I call every doctor who's prescribed it and tell them what I think of this drug and, 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 and whatnot, is Suboxone. Suboxone, a lot of people put people on Suboxone for pain and for, uh, if they're on heroin, they'll put them on Suboxone. This is a very evil, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a comparison what this drug does. If you put someone on Suboxone for a year and take them off, uh, it's gonna take them six months to uh, feel good again uh, and not have these psychological events happening. Heroin is three days of kicking, scratching, and throwing up uh, without ibogaine or iboga, and you're, you're okay. So that's the difference here. These pharmaceutical drugs are far more damaging than, than heroin or just straight cocaine or whatever. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm working – in it, here in Atlanta right now, one-on-one -on -one with a lady who has ataxia, which is basically, she uh, went through a hard time in her life, like a lot of people do, got really depressed and took some antidepressants, which basically sent her nervous system into this state of constant um, convulsions and twitching. So she was pacing for about 18, 20, 22 hours a day. Um, and a lot of people think, well, you know, my doctor prescribed it, so it must be safe for me. And even when she came to me, she said, my doctors don't know which of the many antidepressants they prescribed caused this terrible side effect. And 
the side effects of her antidepressants are so severe, she has to now get electric shock therapy on a regular basis. So a lot of people, when they go to the doctors and they're experiencing pain, depression, and so on, they're, they're wanting to get better and the doctors are really working hard to try and help them, but people are not aware of the serious side effects of some of these medications. So Darren McBrackney, um, why do you think the antidepressants and the SSRIs are some of the hardest drugs to help people get off of? Okay, well, let's, let's go back to the turn of the century. When it was 1900, I think we had maybe one or two diagnoses for like schizophrenia or psychological uh, ailments. Now there's like 380 some. So the pharmaceutical companies are just uh, constantly creating new labels for people to, to give them new drugs, right? So now there's a plethora of these antipsychotic drugs. Uh, and they're, they're, they do some amazing damage uh, uh, to, to the human psyche. Uh, they're not natural, they don't have a soul, and they, they put people in, in these ruts. Um, I, I'm not a scientist or, or a pharmacist, so I can't go into why they, I, I just see it. And I know that they are the hardest to, to get off of and that they have long lasting uh, psychological effects when you get off them. Um, so I, I approach the SSRIs probably with the most caution besides Suboxone and Benzos, okay? Because those are also very dangerous mixed with uh, Iboga. And the important thing to remember about addicts is that they lie, right? And I'm not the type of guy that searches. I, I don't even, I don't even do addiction. I do it for uh, very close friends in some cases, and then I'll tell you why. Um, statistics show out there that Iboga is between 54 and 60 percent uh, effective with addiction. Some people go back, right? Well, if I'm going to do an addiction center, which I'm designing right now, the most perfect one that I can think of, uh, because I don't believe in the other models that they have there in the Western world. But um, I don't want a 54 or 64 percent success rate. I want a 99 percent success rate. And so um, I think this is this should be done over at least a three week period of time. I would have people come in and work with the plants and drink tea. I've, I've successfully taken people off of Suboxone and Methadone and heroin just with the tea of the leaves of the Iboga. OK, so. Um, if the person comes here, they need to detox. Uh, I've had some heavy duty cases and I've treated uh, every type of drug that, that you can, I spend 70% of Americans are on something, right? So I get these intake forms every day and I study these drugs they're on, whether it be tramadol, so you name it. Uh, there's just 70% of people are on, so I, I find myself studying mostly their half-life, right? To see how long they're in someone's system and the effects and, and other stuff of, of what they do. But um, anyways, uh, in the perfect world, in the perfect addiction center, I'm going to be working with these people. They're going to be working with the plants. Uh, I, I approach addiction, the person's not grounded, right? So we want to get them grounded. So what do we do? We throw them in a Temescal or, or uh, in, in, uh, in America that's called a sweat lodge. Um, we're taking them to the beach. I bury people in the sand sometimes for hours just to get them grounded because they're disconnected. With, with this planet. And I think every addiction problem is this disconnect with nature. So the first idea is to get them reconnected with nature because we, we are nature, we are organic people, right? And so uh, this is done with, with various methods. Uh, I do it with food, I do it with the iboga. Um, the, the purpose of iboga uh, is to ground somebody to the center of the earth and to raise their uh, vertical relationship with source, okay? And that's what we are truly here to, to, to live. But we get that disconnection because we watch TV and eat uh, Cocoa Puffs and, and do other things to our body. So we, we, got, we lose that connection. So uh, an addiction center should be about reconnecting uh, that person to Mother Nature, to, 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 to nature, and to ground them, right? And Iboga is, is unbelievable at, at doing this. It's, it's just fantastic to, to see what it does. So microdosing, I'm all about microdosing uh, at daily. Uh, and if a person comes here and they just can't seem to get off these uh, psychological drugs, so, so to speak, or other ones, uh, then, then we'll slowly take them off and put the iboga on. I'm, I'm very good at this. I've done this hundreds of times, and um, I find it safe. Um, I don't want to go into a ceremony with somebody I don't know that's coming here, even though you give me tremendous insight on that person. 
um, I'd rather be completely safe. Um, and so that's, that's what I do. But this, this approach, I'm designing a mini, uh, a mini village, so to speak, with like seven different houses uh, in a field of Iboga um, and a pavilion in the center for the ceremonies. And, and I want these people to work with this, work with this plant and become connected to it and have it heal them. Um, but there's a lot of other factors I look in uh, for success rate, okay? I don't think anybody that's uh, an addict should really go back to their same environment. I love people that like, I'm calling you from Trenton, New Jersey, and I wanna come down and see you, and then I'm gonna go be an, a, a fisherman in Alaska. That's my perfect scenario. I also don't like it when the mother or sister or relative is calling, that's a red flag to me. That's somebody enabling that person. And that's okay sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, mom, uh, Put, put Junior on the phone, though, because I want to talk to Junior and or whoever, and I, I, want, I want to know that they want to get clean, okay? Uh, if that person has the right attitude and the right drive, and, and, uh, uh, but I, I don't like desperation. I like, I like, yeah, this is, I'm sick of being this way, and I want to get clean. Uh, I want to change my life. Um, I have a lot of um, ex addicts that live in my town. They didn't go home. And, uh, that's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. I like people that change their environment. I like people that call me on their own. Uh, then that way I know they want it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my approach. Yeah. Now, uh, two of my nine published books are about how to heal depression without drugs. The most recent Banish the blues. Now you can find on Amazon. And, you know, Darren and I share the same approach, which is when you're trying to heal from anything, you need to address the physical body for sure, but there's also your energy body, the emotional part, which is the largest part of anyone, the mental and the spiritual. And it's our belief that you've got to be dealing with all five levels. Now, Western medicine, of course, offers rehabilitation centers to empower addicts to get off drugs. What is it about that approach that you feel sets people up for having to go back again and again? Okay. Um, well, what's interesting about some places, one place I just studied with the person that just came here, they were at a, a place that, and I've sent somebody to, to a couple of places in Malibu, I, you know, where it's $25,000 for a month. And my guy, I took him, how, he was a, a crack addict. And how many times did it take a crack addict to get on a plane? Five times. He goes to LA and he ditches the people that are picking him up. He's missing for seven days, then goes to rehab and then he jumps the fence on day 28 out of 30 days. So there goes my money and he's, he's still, anyways, the food wasn't organic. I think just the food is very important uh, part of, of your rehabilitation. Um, I, I'm a yoga instructor. I think uh, yoga and meditation are ways to ground the person and to physically get them physically healthy again, right? Uh, so we're talking about someone's dignity that they lose through addiction. So how to get the dignity back? Well, to get your physical, I, I take people surfing, right? And it's super fun. To, and I have a method that I can get anybody to stand up and, and ride away pretty much the first day. Um, so we want someone's dignity back. We want uh, someone's strength, uh, physical strength back. We want someone's mental strength. So uh, I work with Reiki practitioners. I have 32 healers on my list in this little tiny town I live in with dirt roads in Nassara. There's an incredible amount of healers, uh, quality healers here um, uh, that are, do different types of yoga, uh, different, different things. So I'll bring those people in uh, to work with these people. I have some life coaches uh, that are, I find very important for addiction uh, uh, people, what they're going through. Um, but uh, taking Iboga, again, it's, it's like a, a snake shedding their skin. So these people get rid of all the old and they just come out bright and shiny. In fact, there's a, a thing that we refer to as the Iboga glow after a ceremony. And that person is glowing. Um, it also, taking Iboga creates Norbogaine in the liver, which is nature's most powerful antidepressant. So people are happy. It purifies you too. I just did a ceremony last week where... This guy had really terrible eating habits, and now he can't look at processed food without cringing. And he's like, uh, Iboga wants, to, wants you to eat fruit and vegetables and, and non-GMO foods. It, it wants you to be pure. And this is what we're, how we're supposed to be um, anyways. So the difference between a traditional one, I, I've never been to one, but I've, I, I studied them and, and their methods. And um, I, I think it's a bit of a sterile approach uh, and, and a... Uh, 
a, a Western medical approach that doesn't approach uh, that doesn't um, doesn't really seek out what the real problem is. Okay, and and Iboga is a much better therapist than I am or anybody else I know is because it gets into your psyche and and it gives you these downloads and it's all good suggestions. So when you take Iboga, all it wants to do is help your higher purpose, both physically and mentally. So one of the first things it does is it scans your body and it might fix that bicycle injury in your knee from when you're six years old or whatever. Um, and it, I've had a stage four lung cancer guy just zap his chest all, all night. Um, so it's going to go through your body and do that physically. And then you, basically your brain kind of turns into this Google uh, uh, machine where you're getting these downloads. And, and they, a lot of people refer to Iboga as Dr. Iboga. So a lot of, you can ask it questions and interact with this higher source uh, messaging and it's always for that person's higher good. I've never seen Iboga um, communicate with somebody and give them bad advice. I've never ever have seen that. It's always been for the best and that's what I love about working with this plant. It is the best therapist. It is the best physical doctor that you can have um, and I think it's a lot more intelligent than us humans so uh, that's that's my approach. That's the, that's the difference. <laughs> Now, Darren McBratney, founder of the Global Nurture Project, uh, what do you think it is about a boga that offers unique healing properties for people trying to get off drugs? You, you mentioned that boga is the most powerful plant medicine in the world. So what is unique about a boga that's different from other plant medicines? Like a lot of people have heard of ayahuasca, for example. And what is it that's unique about Iboga? Okay, uh, yeah, Iboga, it, what's unique, I'll, I'll, first of all, let's, let's, ayahuasca I have nothing but respect for. Um, uh, I've done it. Uh, I, it's, it's really, it helped me with a, with a lung infection once that was quite frankly uh, putting me into a hospital and it saved me from, from hospitalization. And I have nothing but, uh, nothing but respect for, for that plant and the ways and the different ways of, of doing that as well. Um, ayahuasca, we're talking about DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and, and uh, that's not Iboga. Iboga works with these mysterious alkaloids. Uh, so that's the one of the differences. Um, the other difference is ayahuasca is a feminine uh, energy uh, root chakra uh, versus a male energy crown chakra uh, Iboga plant. So we have the grandmother of plant medicine and we have the grandfather. And I think they love each other. Iboga, and I got a little bit of flack from the Iboga community telling people that Iboga was jealous of other plants and stuff. It's just very dignified and likes working on its own, okay? So if you're gonna do any other medicines like ayahuasca or San Pedro cactus or any of these other things, they have to be done before Iboga because Iboga works on a person for like six, six days intensely and then six months it's still working on you. And it doesn't like, if, if you take ayahuasca after iboga too close, it's going to, I call it jealousy. It's just it's going to shut off working on you, and it's, and it's going to go, okay, you want that other plant? You, you're going to get that other plant. I, I could give you a lot of examples of, of this that I've seen firsthand, uh, but we don't really have time for that. But um, uh, the difference is, is the I, I, iboga is these alkaloids working on you. Um, and uh, the effects are, are, are different in how you feel. Uh, Iboga is a lot longer and more intense than, than ayahuasca. We're talking about a 30 hour meditation here. Um, I, I approach it, uh, a lot of people are a little anxious and whatever going into an Iboga ceremony because to me it's like, yeah, you're gonna climb Mount Everest here. This is, you're being reborn, right? So this is the, the most uh, uh, intense thing that you're probably doing in your life. And there's nothing fun about it. Um, and generally it treats you how you're treating yourself. And if you're, I'm treating an addict, that means it's not going to be such an easy night for them. There's probably going to be lots of uh, purging or vomiting, um, lots of going to the bathroom. Uh, so how do we detox? We detox through sweat, uh, through secretion, um, uh, and this type of thing. So but anyways, so I, I take people, and I want to ground them is my first approach. And then um, to give her the anxiety and everything, we do low doses and do the boga yoga. I'm the only one doing this as far as I know. Uh, I've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, and then I'm, I'm the, this is what's the cool thing, and I encourage all other facilitators to do this. I'm the only one I know of that brings a, a masseuse in 
why you're coming onto this medicine. It takes an hour and like 45 minutes to come onto this medicine. Um, and, and in that time, isn't it just a beautiful thing to have a massage and get relaxed to, so you can enjoy this, this 30 hour intense uh, meditation that's very intense for six to eight hours. And you're gonna have trouble walking to the bathroom even. We, we, we completely, I have women, facilit women facilitators working with women and men with men. Um, and uh, um, it's very intense for, for eight hours and the rest of the day, you're, you're, it basically is sending you to other dimensions to heal. Um, if you need a shaman, now uh, I've just had plenty of people experience shamans coming to them through the medicine. Um, and I believe a shaman can be a person that's somewhere else on the planet that comes to you through these other dimensions or someone who's even passed away or whatever. Um, Iboga also opens up uh, portholes for ancestors to visit you. And I have a rule that you can have them come to you, but you can't go with them because it tends to make people go too deep. But um, I invite these uh, things into people's lives during the ceremony. Um, I don't necessarily talk to you. Um, I think that the higher source is a lot smarter than I am to give you these messages. I'm there to support you um, in a very safe and loving environment. And all the work is done by this plant mostly. And um, that's, that's the beauty of it. Um, that's, that's the beauty of it. But it's a very long process. Uh, it takes a couple days. On that third day, that's the day that you wake up and it's like, if, if, if people are still processing that, because sometimes this plant can be very, so intense, it goes down to a DNA level. And I know if someone hasn't purged in 24 hours, then they're going to take a couple days to recover. And it's doing some very deep work on their DNA uh, level. So, so uh, anyways. Uh, uh. <laughs> Darren McBratney, if a person wants to get off drugs, whether those drugs are illegal or legal drugs prescribed by their medical doctors, what are some of the common steps they need to take to prepare for drug withdrawal? For example, if I'm working with any client here in the U.S., I say, you know, go to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. Work with your doctor. But what are some steps that people can take to prepare for drug withdrawal? Okay, well, there's a couple different scenarios here. Like I just had one gal call from Nashville, Tennessee, and she's on a cocktail of different drugs. I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. I sent her to a clinic in Arizona to clinically help her get off this cocktail of arrangements she's at because that's just uh, too much of a tornado for me to deal with. Um, uh, so uh, what helps is, okay, so yeah, tapering down is one thing, but you, it's going to help a lot with people and detoxing. So I'm telling them to go to an infrared sauna or go sweat, right? Because that's what we're doing. That's going to help anybody, even with cigarette, putting cigarettes. And I'm kind of, kind of known for helping people get off cigarettes. Uh, but you, you want to sweat. Colonics, I'm a huge fan of colonics, right? Um, especially with any heroin or opiate addict that's been an addict for over a, six months or more, they're constipated. Um, I'm serving them hot water or warm water, warm salt water for days when they get here to get things moving, right? That's how we detox you. Um, so sweating, detoxing is a good thing. Tapering down, um, and with some, some different drugs, we're, you know, taper you down, we're going to put you on uh, some microdoses, and we're going to wean, wean this off. And, and it's not like you're going to be completely uh, uh, withdrawal free, and that means the shakes and the vomit. I mean, that's, it's just going to be uh, minimized down to hardly anything uh, compared to doing it on your own. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you're still going to go through some withdrawals, but it's just, it's just hardly, it's just amazing what Iboga does uh, for that, for these people uh, getting off drugs. So my suggestion is detox, uh, lots of water. Um, it, it's a very simple thing every morning that, that anybody should do preparing to do Iboga because it's so, it's the most detoxifying natural agent on the planet. And so it's very taxing on your liver. So anybody coming to see me, whether it's drugs or not, they're, they're uh, taking a glass in the morning and they're putting one tablespoon of organic olive oil and squeezing a one Meyer lemon into that. And they're drinking it and they're not eating or drinking anything for 25 minutes in the morning. Okay. That's a liver cleanse. And I want, I want somebody to do that for three weeks before they see me. Um, I also want their magnesium levels up uh, 300 to 500 milligrams uh, a day of, of liquid magnesium is good. Or that's three or four coconuts here. Uh, but we have an abundance of those. And I, uh, I, I, I give coconuts to, to people when they get here because that's, a, that's nature's Gatorade. That's a, a lot of magnesium in there. Um, what else do I do? I, I suggest colonics, um, 
yeah, this is a, it, it, that might need, it, it, and I, I know through the reading what they're deficient in. I, I know what their most stressed organ is, so we're kind of concentrating on that. Um, I know what supplements they're needing. I know what nutrients they're needing. I also know what nutrients might be affecting their brain chemistry or body chemistry, right? So that's thanks to these readings. Uh, and I, I think that any place in the world, um, and, and I, I don't have a patent on this, and I don't want a patent. I want everybody to use the Global Nurture Project because it's, it's the best approach to getting to know your client and what is best for them. It's, it's their optimal health blueprint, and I suggest it for any any facility that's, that's treating anybody for anything because it's, it's, it's the old uh, Edgar Casey approach, right? So now Darren McBratney, traditional medicine prescribes the, the medication Ibogaine, which is a drug for drug withdrawal and you use the root bark of Iboga. So Ibogaine is derived from Iboga, but it's not the whole of Iboga. What's the difference, in your opinion, between ibogaine and iboga root bark, and what are the differences patients would experience from both? Okay, well, let's talk about the three things available. There's ibogaine, which is an isolated alkaloid of the iboga plant. Okay, um, and it's it's a lot smoother ride. It's also um, dissipates in the body quicker. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can also uh, do people by weight, which is not really what you do with root bark. Uh, um, uh, it spiritually doesn't doesn't work for me. And I, I know I know between shamans that have taken uh, just the ibogaine, and it's spiritually lacking. I have not personally taken it. Um, I don't do synthetic pharmaceuticals, and that's what it is. Um, but it, all, it, all the ibogaine is, is is isolating the the psychedelic uh, part of this plant, if you will, and it's it's still very beneficial for people. And these are what most ibogaine clinics are. They're, this is what they're using is this ibogaine a medicine. Um, and I, I'm I'm not saying it's ineffective. I'm saying it's very effective. But I'm just saying, aren't, aren't we leaving out at least eleven or more compounds or, or uh, alkaloids here that that are mysterious and and seem to have more of a spiritual effect. Um, I understand that the effects are different spiritually, okay? Uh, so yeah, the addiction's gone and all that, but what about, what about that uh, trauma that caused your addiction? I don't think that's being addressed by Ibogaine, to tell you the truth. And then we have TA, which is a total alkaloid. Now that's cool, and I've worked with that because that's extracting all the alkaloids that are in um, Iboga. But getting back to me being a, a roots person, um, I like I like I like the I like things natural. I like iboga root bark. Okay, I like the I like the plant. How God put it on this planet. I think that's how you're supposed to take it. Okay, I don't think that any lab or any doctor should be should be uh, meddling with with this natural medicine. I, I that's, that's my opinion and. Um, I, I love working with the root bark. You eat a lot more like a, a, an ibogaine. You're eating just a little capsule. When you come to me doing a ceremony, you might be eating 44 capsules. Okay, so it's a. Uh, uh, but in Africa, I just put it in your hand, like 14 grams, whatever. You mix it with honey, and, and it 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 doesn't taste the best in the world. Uh, it's like kind of like an ayahuasca kind of kind of thing. Um, but uh, anyways, um, I'm all about the root bark. I'm all about the. It's, it's kind of like uh, Edgar Casey holistic healing, healing the whole person. I'm using the whole plant, okay? And that's, that's the difference. Um, I'm not knocking Ibogaine. Uh, I think it's quite effective for some people. If that's what you want to do, I'm not that guy. That's all. Now, Darren McBratney, founder of the Global Nurture Project, as you know, Iboga, the plant medicine, is illegal in the United States, the UK, and many other parts of the world. Are there efforts by scientific researchers to legitimize the use of the plant for drug withdrawal? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, as the globe goes, there's 14 countries that uh, Iboga is illegal in. Okay. And interestingly enough, these are the countries where the pharmaceutical companies have a stronghold in, right? The reason being, in my point of view, is that's because this plant cures everything. It cures uh, incurable diseases like lupus, AIDS, uh, I've seen it 
cure arthritis. Uh, I, I've seen it, it. It's very good with thyroid. It's good with everything. Let's, let's just talk about getting away from drug addiction and what Iboga can do for people. Um, I've seen it cure stage four lung cancer. I, I, don't, I shouldn't use that word cure. I've seen it heal uh, many, many different ailments. Um, okay, so getting back to are they trying to make it uh, uh, legal? Uh, Howard Lotsoff tried to make it legal for 20 some years. I've had lunch and dinner with his, his wife. He's passed away now. Um, and, and God bless his efforts because he was a heroin addict and took this stuff out of a refrigerator, I think in 1960, I don't want to, 64, something like that. And he, and he woke he, along with three other addicts and they woke up without addiction. And so he was a big advocate to try to get it uh, legalized and everything. But you have to have at least $3 million to try to get things uh, in line or whatever. I had an interesting meeting here. I think it was two years ago. I had Henry Mellon. That's, that's Mellon of Mellon Bank. And this is a big pharmaceutical guy. <laughs> I got this phone call uh, and uh, he said, I'm going to fly down. He flew down on his private jet uh, from, from Boston or Washington, D.C. or something like that. So he came to my office here to have a meeting with me because he'd heard about me and, and the uses of Iboga, whatever. And he asked me, he'd already spent $10 million. Now what he was trying, now what he still was trying to do, I guess, I, I have no idea, I haven't talked to him since this meeting. But he, he came to me and he said, well, what do you think about what I'm doing? And I said, what are you doing? And he said, in order to get this plant legal in the United States and to use for addiction, I'm trying to take the visions out of the plant so it's non-psychedelic, right? Um, and I don't even like that word psychedelic. This is plant medicine. These are visions. This is I, nothing. There's nothing psychedelic about this plant to me. Um, ayahuasca is a little bit different. <laughs> I would say that's some psychedelic stuff uh, as far as the visions and sacred geometry and stuff. But, but anyways, uh, so if it, you, you can't take out the vision, I, I said, that this is ridiculous to take out the visions of this plant because that's where the work gets done. Mind you that only 70 or so percent of the people get visions uh, when they take this plant. But if you do, none of this stuff is mental garbage. It's absolutely like I had a doctor, a pathologist here, who was this very vivacious, cute young woman who was her biggest inner critic. And her first vision was the words inner critic above her head. And this big rock came down and buried them into the ground. And ever since that moment, she wasn't her biggest inner critic. That's a vision. That's, that's, a, that's a very profound thing for this person. And, and all of these visions are profound. So I had this argument with him that I, I thought he was completely insane for doing this. It's not, it's not good, but good luck. And I, I hope, I, you know, anything that can help an addict or a person is okay with me. But I don't, I think you're, 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 you're meddling with the spirit of this plant. And I don't think that's cool, in my opinion. Um, I think he wants to make millions of dollars and, and help people at the same time. But I, I gave him some microdoses. I said, try this stuff. I said, if you want to do it, if you, if you really want to know what these veggies do, let's do a ceremony. And I, I, I didn't get him to do one, but um, off he went on his plane. And with all my two hours of advice and, and uh, against doing what he's doing, but uh, I, I have no idea what, what, what became of that, to tell you the truth. But there is people trying to, to work around that factor and, and make it legal. There's a governor of Vermont or something, too, that – is trying to legalize uh, Iboga, but but they won't they won't let that happen. The powers that be, because it, it just doesn't just cure addiction; it cures everything, Catherine. Everything. I can't think of almost no reason. You, you, I've even you know if if you look at, into research, it says there's a lot of people out there like oh don't give it to anybody who's schizophrenic. I worked with a lot of mental patients, so to speak, mental guests or with mental issues, and labeled as schizophrenia, but I've seen them completely cured. So who's it not good for? It's not good for anybody who has a weak heart, a weak liver, and a weak mind or any recent head injuries. Other than that, um, and, and I probably refuse one out of 300 people in, in, my, uh, in my intake forms or whatever. And that's usually because you will find a mutated gene in their liver that a, a medical test won't pick up on um, or, or, or whatever. But um, and it's nice to have, uh, it's nice to triangulate dosages with kinesiology and medical intuitiveness uh, as well. Um, I find this a very accurate form of, of applying this medicine to people. Um, but again, getting back to addiction, what this talk is about, um, I approach it with a lot of caution. And I just don't do a ceremony on people right away. I don't, I don't do that. They're here for days and days and days. 
of, of getting nutrients. First of all, you, you, you want to be strong. And I think that anybody that can walk from the bottom of my ranch to the top of my ranch is okay to do any bogus session. Some of these addicts don't have that energy. Um, and that's why we look at their chi level, right? In the intuitive uh, reports, I get a chi level. And if this level is low, we need to get that chi level up before the ceremony, okay? Because they gotta be, you got to be strong to, to do this because you're being reborn. <laughs> So, Darren McBratney, any final thoughts? If someone is listening to this program and they are facing an addiction, whether it's to heroin, cocaine, alcohol, cigarettes, or you know the numerous psychiatric drugs that are prescribed, what message of hope and healing do you have for these people? They, they have to absolutely want this. Um, they have to want this 100% because we're dealing with an intention-based medicine here, right? And so if you have any trepidations about your path of being purified and, and uh, if you're just going, oh, I'm going to use this as a crutch, I don't want to see you. I don't, I don't, I, that's not, uh, that's not uh, what I want to hear. I want to hear, uh, yes, I'm tired of, 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 of being at this low frequency. Because what Iboga is, well, what everything is, right? Let's get back to Nikola Tesla. Everything is vibration and frequency, right? Now, I have one worker that, that can't work around my Iboga plants because he physically gets sick. And, and when you take Iboga, uh, some people hear it and some people don't. You, you hear this buzzing. And it's, it's like a bee is going around your head. And I used to think, when I first started doing this Iboga, I used to think this was the Iboga thing in your pineal gland because your intuition becomes so in tune and, uh, your alignment and everything. But in fact, it's the frequency of this plant going inside you, raising your vibe, raising your frequency. Isn't that cool? Um, so it's literally giving you this higher frequency. Um, I can't remember what, how that conversation started, but um, um, it, it, what, what does a person want uh, that's addicted? Uh, I, I want them, I want to, I want to hear that they're a hundred percent. I don't want to hear from their mother. I don't want to hear from their spouse. I want to hear like, I want to, I want to change my life. I'm, I'm sick of being this way. Uh, I want this 100% with all my heart and soul. Then, then I'll work with you. Sure. You've been listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio, your global feel-good radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. If you're interested in learning about how to heal depression without drugs, you may want to consult my book, Banish the Blues Now. Our guest today has been Darren McBratney, the BOGA facilitator, healer, founder of the Global Nurture Project and owner of the Costa Rica Yoga Spa. You can find out more about Darren McBratney and his very profound work at Costa Rica Yoga Spa and globalnurtureproject.com. And remember, if you are addicted, you can get clean, you can get well, take your power back and, and, and encourage yourself to know that you can feel better. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.